The renewed crisis surrounding the British Army's Ajax Armoured Fighting Vehicle marks one of the most significant defence procurement failures in modern UK history. What was launched 15 years ago as an ambitious effort to replace the Army's ageing CVR, T, family has instead evolved into a cautionary tale of mismanagement, shifting requirements, unrealistic expectations and deep structural flaws. The latest halt in trials, after 31 soldiers were hospitalized with noise and vibration-related injuries, has pushed the program to what many insiders now see as a point of no return. In its current form, Ajax appears unable to fulfill its intended role, and the question is no longer how to fix it within the existing framework, but whether the vehicle should survive at all. The most immediate spark for the renewed controversy is the recurrence of the same symptoms that derailed Ajax years earlier. Soldiers involved in training reported vomiting, shaking, and persistent ringing in the ears, symptoms strongly associated with excessive vibration and dangerous noise levels within the vehicle. These issues were supposedly addressed in earlier remediation phases, and officials even declared initial operating capability in November 2025. Yet within weeks the same failures re-emerged, raising serious doubt about the integrity of previous testing and the effectiveness of the applied fixes. The return of these problems suggests not a minor engineering anomaly but a deep systemic design flaw, one that cannot be mitigated with incremental adjustments. According to a procurement insider, the roots of the crisis began long before the first vehicles rolled off the production line. The British Army issued more than 1,000 requirements at the outset, effectively trying to force an Ascot-based vehicle into a role far beyond its original parameters. Weight ballooned from the Ascot's 19 tons to as much as 43 tons with applique armor, placing unprecedented stress on its hull, engine mountings, and running gear. At the same time, the Ministry of Defense compressed its normal acquisition cycle, merging the demonstration and manufacturing phases and allowing production to begin before the final design had been validated. These decisions created a perfect storm, a vehicle that was overweight, over-engineered on paper, and under-tested in reality. Compounding this was a fixed-price contract with General Dynamics Land Systems. Every change in requirements reduced the contractor's profit margin, generating friction and mistrust between the company and the mod. As costs rose and deadlines slipped, the relationship degraded into one marked by tension, secrecy and reluctance to escalate concerns. The insider's allegation that the Institute of Naval Medicine's report, which had identified serious health risks, was suppressed both internally and externally only deepens the perception of a program driven more by the need to preserve political appearances than operational readiness. When testing resumed without this critical knowledge, soldiers suffered permanent hearing injuries, igniting a scandal that forced ministerial intervention and the commissioning of the Sheldon Report. Despite these revelations, the government chose to continue the program rather than cancel it, influenced in part by the reality that terminating Ajax would recover none of the £6.1 billion already spent. But the past four years have shown that no incremental fix has succeeded in addressing the core problems. Noise-canceling headsets, additional seat cushioning and metal patches welded onto the hull have amounted to little more than cosmetic band-aids. The fundamental structure remains flawed, and each attempted workaround has simply confirmed the insider's view. The Ajax can only be saved through a complete redesign of its hull, running gear, and suspension system. The comparison to General Dynamics M10 Booker is especially revealing. Intended initially to leverage the Ajax chassis, Booker ultimately required an entirely new design because the original platform was not up to the job. The Booker's redesigned hull, hydropneumatic suspension, Composite rubber tracks and forward-mounted engine illustrate the scale of change necessary to produce a viable armored vehicle. If the company itself abandoned the Ajax architecture for its own U.S. offering, it raises serious doubts that minor alterations could ever make Ajax fit for British service. Even if a full redesign were pursued, a process that would require massive new investment and likely a decade of additional development, the strategic question remains whether Ajax is still relevant to modern warfare. The insider's remarks about Ukraine underscore the shifting nature of reconnaissance and survivability. 
Today's battle space punishes large, noisy, electronically exposed vehicles operating ahead of infantry. Drones, both airborne and ground-based, increasingly conduct reconnaissance. Armored platforms in this role must be stealthy, agile and adaptable to electronic warfare conditions. Ajax, conceived in an earlier era, does not align with these trends. Its large profile, heavy weight and mechanical vulnerabilities put it at odds with what forward reconnaissance now requires. These operational realities explain why cavalry units have reportedly lost confidence in the vehicle. The Army's needs are evolving toward platforms that can serve as drone carriers, data nodes and flexible fire support assets. For this, the Insider recommends adopting a turreted boxer variant, specifically the proven RCD-30 configuration used by Germany and the Netherlands, while planning for the future acquisition of a tracked infantry fighting vehicle such as Puma or KF-41. This approach would provide an immediate, credible capability without forcing the army to sink further resources into an AFV that remains fundamentally misaligned with its mission. What makes the Ajax crisis uniquely troubling is the duration and scale of the failure. Nearly a decade of repeated cycles, public criticism in 2016, crisis in 2021, suppressed assessments dating back to 2020, and the latest 2025 breakdown, demonstrate how deeply embedded the program's issues have become. Political leaders, procurement officials and senior military commanders have all, at various points, attempted to shield the program, fearing the consequences of admitting its shortcomings. This reluctance has led to a classic sunk cost dilemma, billions spent without producing a fieldable vehicle, and yet the momentum of past investment making it difficult to let go. As the insider bluntly concludes, Ajax represents a failure politically, economically and militarily. Its continuation risks consuming resources that could otherwise modernize the army in areas where urgent capability gaps exist. The hard truth is that the program may have reached the point where cancellation is the only responsible option. Whether the government chooses to redesign, replace or terminate the project, the decision will shape Britain's credibility within NATO and influence future defense procurement strategy. Ultimately, the Ajax saga exposes fundamental flaws in how the UK approaches complex defense programs. It shows the dangers of compressing acquisition cycles, allowing requirements to spiral, and relying on fixed-price contracts for developmental platforms. It highlights the consequences of withholding critical safety information and prioritizing political optics over operational outcomes. And it underscores the evolving demands of modern warfare, demands that Ajax, in its present form, cannot meet. The British Army set out 15 years ago to field a world-class reconnaissance vehicle, today it is still without one, and time is running out to decide how much longer it can afford to wait.